street in Deer in Lincoln County. We don't need the electronic participation approval. And so, Chris Volkman. Mr. Skalski? Here. Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. Garber? Here. Mr. Morin? Here. Chairman Hodges? Here. Gentlemen, have y'all reviewed the meeting agenda and are there any amendments or changes or approval? Mr. Chair, motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Great. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Morin? Aye. Mr. Miskowski? Aye. Chairman Hodges? Aye. Next item up is public hearing ordinance 05-23. Revisions to the King William County Code section. 18-37B for issuing license. Good evening, Good evening gentlemen. The ordinance proposal before you is an exemption um, specifically for vendors at special events uh, that would be held by the county on county property or somehow in affiliation with the county. So something like EDA's farmer's market would qualify. Um, this would be for businesses that would otherwise be liable for or obligated to pay a business license or a peddler's license, a tenant person fee, and only for uh, these events. Um, it also includes any businesses that already have a business license here in the county. If they were to set up a shop at one of these special events, they would not need to report those uh, receipts um, towards their own business license that they would need for. The rest of their business. Any questions? Anybody? Mr. Hodges, we have legal view. Yes. Do I have a motion? We, we, we need a public oh, hearing. Oh, sorry. I'm jumping ahead again. <clears throat> All right, at this point in time, I will open up a public hearing on ordinance 05-23. Anyone that would like to come here, go. As usual, it's three minutes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Gentlemen, Chris Couch from District 5. I do actually represent uh, other businesses, but it's relevant here. Um, let's call this what this really is. It's not a special event ordinance. It's a change to business license and be called tax ordinance. You might recall that the tax code ordinances have changed in the past. When clarifications were proposed, James Anderson was adamant that the Dillon rule forbids any addition to a locality's tax code from what the state allows. That was just a definition. This is a new exemption. I'm not sure why it would be any different, yet here we are now. What is the cause that we're trying to solve for? If somebody is a King Lee resident, wants to act like a business, attend markets, sell goods, collect state sales tax, and have business insurance, why do they be exempt from getting a $30 business license and paying business taxes? There are already exemptions in the stack in, this, in the code. Farms, for instance, are exempt, but only when everything offered for sale is grown and produced by the same farmer. Not all farms are exempt. Some, like mine, are businesses as well. Since I collaborate with other local farms and sourcing produce, I pay a business license. I pay annual default taxes on all my revenue. I pay business paying for personal property taxes on the kitchen equipment, automobile taxes, automobile taxes on a growing fleet of delivery vehicles. I'll have to collect and pay local sales taxes for other local businesses who also pay all of these legitimate taxes. These are paid because we're legitimately operating businesses. On behalf of the other legitimately operating businesses in King William, I ask a simple question that I've not heard discussed. How do existing businesses take this proposal and what impact might it have on them? You've already spent thousands of dollars on legal fees. For this proposal. So I hope there's some answers. Since this has been circulating amongst the EDA, the county administration, the county attorney, the board of supervisors, and now I'm before you in front of this public hearing. The proposed exemption is nothing more than King League government's pledge support for illegitimate businesses. Doing so on the hardworking back of the legitimate King League businesses that pay taxes and fund these very events. Presidents have been set with an emergency declaration waiving business licenses earlier this month by the county administration. Is that even a thing? You pass this, you can no longer say King Lee supports local businesses by waiving the need for a business license. They're not businesses, they're not the vendors are not businesses. Um, and the, the interesting thing, I, I'm glad you clarified that, that if you have a business license and you attend one of these events, those sales are not liable for 
people taxes. So that could be a great thing. Somebody offering an annual service or gift cards or some of these other localities, businesses operating in county. Some things that you consider, I really do not see this as a business friendly uh, ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Not seeing anyone come forward. I will close this public hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair, if, if maybe Mr. Hudson can come in, we can talk about um, you know the purpose of this proposal, what we're brought in the and what we're trying, you know, as, as Mr. Capps asked, what problem are we trying to solve with here? Um, one of the, the biggest, I would say, is the um, itinerant merchants that includes, um, for our commissioner's uh, understanding of the uh, definition, that includes food trucks and a number of special events that we have here at the county that if we asked the food truck to arrive, they would be happy to do so, except then they are not liable for just a $30 business license, they're actually liable for a $250 itinerant merchant license. Um, and therefore, they don't want to come because they're not going to make that much in sales. Um, this was uh, deliberated on at the same time that we are preparing for the EDA's farmer's market, which uh, I think the discussion has said before that there was not a consensus to charge fees at that uh, farmer's market as well as um, events on the county green like Juneteenth, where uh, there was no understanding that they would be paying up, anyone would be paying a business license or itinerant version license. But do we maybe have a bigger problem? We've discussed this before, but we never did come to any conclusion on this. I, I don't think it, you and I believe that the commissioner's interpretation of that statute is consistent with other commissioner's interpretation. And um, we've discussed this with legal and it's kind of open to her interpretation. Um, on the other hand, uh, itinerant merchant uh, fees make up a very small uh, percentage of, it's just a small amount of revenue each year. And there's nothing that would keep the county from just uh, putting those at a $30 fee instead of the 250 for uh, perishable goods and a $500 fee for imperishable goods. Uh, itinerant merchants. But that also includes um, fireworks dealers, um, things of that nature. It would also include crafts, things like that, that, that are at the farmer's market too. If um, there are other exemptions that have to do if you make your own or if you're selling something somebody else has made. The other localities that have farmers markets do they, they they're doing something similar to, to this something in our research some localities uh a number of localities have exemptions like this um this was very similar to was it Enrico, mm -hmm. i think that uh has an ordinance of this nature but there are also plenty of farmers markets that charge fees I just feel like we're trying to incentivize something that's new and get it off the ground. Not saying we can't change this at a later date. Well, I, I don't disagree with, with that idea. I just I just wonder if we're we're maybe aiming aiming too low with this and we need to to try to yeah fix the especially the peddler's license portion of, of the ordinance that we have that is apparently unclear, although it is fairly clear to me when I read it, what I think it means, um, but since we have certain words that are included in that out-of-state code, it's being interpreted to be a much broader uh, category than I believe it's supposed to be. Um, regardless, I mean, what's the time sensitivity with this? When um, we were concerned about Juneteenth happening. Okay, so quite sensitive. Okay, um, I, don't, I don't really have a problem with with this, I, I understand what we're trying to do with that. I just want us to not lose sight of the, the bigger issue here because again, we've got food trucks that are trying to operate that are operating under inconsistent terms one year to the next because of interpretation code. And I think maybe that's another thing that we need to 
fix um, in addition to, to this here. So. Yeah, I don't know if y'all remember we saw about a snow cone mm -hmm. vendor mm -hmm. continually coming up and not paying anything where you had yeah. business that were open there that we're trying to sell well the snow cone that, that vendor that, that I'm aware of has been getting a business license consistently, but was then asked this year to acquire a peddler's license as opposed to just a typical business license. And that is because they use in the peddler's license terminology uh, anyone who sells ice, even though if you read the entirety of that, it's it's pretty clearly talking about people who sell ice that is like would have been harvested off of lakes or something, you know, and stored in an ice house. Um, regardless, it just did something that needs to be cleared up, I think, to, um, to be consistent. Um, but this, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, in general, I don't have an issue with this here because I understand the purpose of it. It was actually shutting down the others that were trying to come in, correct? Didn't it happen at least one? The food trucks, yeah. yeah. I can see the point where they probably couldn't make any money at that rate. So food trucks, if they have a license, they don't have, they have a restricted area. So I would think that a food truck could, could probably set up anywhere in the county. So am I indirect with that? But they had a problem here. It's not just anywhere in the county. I think there's um, zoning rules around it um, where they park, um, such as not in residential neighborhoods or something. You gotta, but, um, you gotta remember permission to be there. Uh, food trucks are a um, commissioner, should really be the one uh, talking to you about it. Um, she's more familiar, but I know that they have their own uh, set of rules that they're licensed to another locality first, for the, and for the first, I think, two or three years. They only pay license fees to their own locality, and then they are um, able to be taxed feed um, somewhere else. Okay. Well, in the spirit of we need to get this done before the Juneteenth uh, celebration, I will make a motion to uh, approve 05 23 <clears throat> If it's anything that we need to address later, we can look at. Yeah, I just didn't want to lose sight of that 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 larger goal of getting that that ordinance more consistent, or more clear, I suppose. And I'll second. Any further discussion? Chris, Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Warren, aye. Mr. Muscalski, aye. Mr. Greenwood, aye. Chairman Hodge, aye. All right, the next item we up is the work session matters. A is family dollar request for ABC license. Rob Hudson, uh, station consulting on Zoom. Mr. So. Chairman, before Mr. Hossick, uh addresses the board, I just wanted to again bring this uh, formally before you. It is a request from family dollar to be able to uh, receive a license to be able to sell uh, beer and wine at, at uh, 84. At Central Garage, and your uh, your discussions this evening would not lead to a vote of approval. It would just be comments that we would carry uh, and forward to the ABC Commission, who makes the final decision on whether this uh, license would be approved. So, and it's not uncommon. No, this is a maybe one of the first ones that you. Received in a while, but uh, this, this is Dallas General has, has been in a couple of years. That's correct. So, Mr. Hosick, if you're on uh, if you're online and you would like to comment now, uh, the board supervisors uh, are willing. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager, Mr. Administrator, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, um, Commissioners. My name is Rob Hosack. I am a consultant with Decisions Consulting uh, LLC, and we are here tonight on behalf of Family Dollar at 4950 Richmond Taft Highway, 
Um, as you make consideration tonight, as far as providing comments uh, to the ABC, I just wanted to, and I appreciate the opportunity to make these comments. I just wanted to provide you with a little bit of information as to <clears throat> how seriously uh, Family Dollar as a company uh, takes uh, the responsibility to sell alcohol uh, appropriately and responsibly. Um, I think different than perhaps uh, a package store or a convenience store, um, Family Dollar has limited uh, hours of operation. Um, there is also within our stores video surveillance that allows us to monitor cameras, not only in the parking lot of the spaces that we lease, uh, as, but also perhaps more importantly, uh, we're able to look at the areas, the very small areas of the store uh, that provide for the display and sale of beer and wine. Um, also wanted to mention that as a company, there is a very, very concerted uh, effort to combat underage sales, uh, which includes the use of training, signage, ID technologies. Um, we're very, very proud to uh, announce and, and usually share with folks that our violation numbers on a national basis are less than 0.004%. Uh, um, which I believe on a national basis is very good. There is a robust training uh, program for all associates uh, that join the store and it focuses on alcohol and tobacco compliance. It includes uh, learning objectives such as minimum age requirement, uh, recognizing or restricting underage sale, recognizing what a good identification is what a valid identification is, um, knowing or teaching our associates how to uh, respectfully refuse uh, the sale uh, to a person that appears to be underage or intoxicated and how to communicate that uh, effectively. We also, as I had mentioned, Mr. Chair, um, utilize handheld ID scanning technology. And I think that through our internal self audit program, um, we have, um, and sure that there is a very, very strict direction to all of our employees, as well as uh, we have a zero tolerance policy for underage sales. Um, safety is a number one priority uh, for all of our operations uh, that sell beer and wine. And did want to comment on a couple of other things. Um, we do not sell discounted alcohol. Um, so the very, very small area uh, that is set aside for beer or wine displays um, does not contain any type of buy two for this discounted price. It is the same price that you would find at a local grocery store um, that offers the sale of beer and wine. Um, wanted to close, uh, Mr. Chairman, happy to answer any questions. I uh, did want to mention though that this is really um, more of a convenience that we hope to offer to existing customers as opposed to a new book of business for, for the company. So I'm um, happy to answer any questions or provide additional information. And I appreciate your uh, time and attention. Thank you, sir. Any questions? I mean, food line was right next door and they're selling the same stuff. And Probably settle with that. Well, the convenience store is all the way around. Sure. But I don't see any impact in my opinion. I agree. It's the problem here. Stephen, anything? No, I just I didn't even know that they didn't have one. I just thought have them not have them, but I don't know. We said I said do it all. Family dollars not have beer and wine yet. I he he could answer that. Uh, oh. Obviously, one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm most of you at Dollar General do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. It's everywhere else. I mean, people want to pay more to go there and not do a food line or whatever. That's fine. Mr. Hodge, I, I am not hearing any res resistance to your, your request. And I think that will be forwarded on for it. We'll communicate that to uh, the agency uh, commission. All right, thank you, sir.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Am I excused, sir? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Next item is B, motion need to authorize board chair and county administrator to sign and submit notarized statement to certify presentation of the FY 2022 financial report to local government body. And we have. Mr. Chairman, at your last meeting, uh, the formal uh, FY 22 audit was presented to the board of supervisors by our uh, auditor, Robinson Farmer Cox, Aaron Hawkins specifically. And we forwarded uh, action uh, as a result of that to tonight's meeting, which uh, ultimately we need a motion to, for you to accept the audit. <coughs> and uh, we will then communicate that uh, officially to the auditor so that uh, it is uh, in, the, in the books and uh, we are already preparing for FY23. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there any questions, Chris? Mr. Hawkins is on Zoom if, uh, if you have any questions about the audit uh, specifically, or, and Ms. Mills is here as well. Anything you done? Yeah. All right. So as far as any remedies, we're on track to. We are. We've all, we've already started to address uh, uh, anything, any findings, and and other areas of the of the document uh, that will make certainly the next the next document much cleaner, and much better. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah, I have a motion. So moved. Question. Any discussion? Chris. Mr. Warren? Aye. Ms. Muskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Barker? Aye. Jeremy Hatchie? Aye. The next item up is resolution 23-41, approval revisions to personnel policy and information. Thank you. Good evening. Um, the personnel policy was written as it stands now in 2016. We've done quite a few revisions since then, as we've needed them and as we've changed some things. But uh, the last few months, I have been working with Sam Danzerson's attorneys to bring us up to code. The Virginia Human Rights Act was passed, um, and some edits have been made for federal law, for state law, just to bring us in compliance and have the right terminology. So your memo and your packet includes the summary of the chapters that were changed, the sections that were changed, rather than printing the whole document. I included just the sections in red so that you can see where the differences were. Um, if you'd like, I can go through each one individually if you've read them, but I can address any questions. Would you like me to go through them or? I think we have any questions. Anyone see it necessary for her to go through each one? Are there any that you would consider significant versus moderate versus? I think I don't consider any of them significant. Um, the majority of them, it was either clarification language that was added just to go an extra step to make sure it was very clear that we were complying with how the code was written, be it for FMLA, for Americans with Disabilities Act, for um, um, compensatory time, um, just clarifying some things there. There was language added for um, lactation that was not previously included in there. There was language added for, um, one thing that did change was the policy when people leave, that if they did not have returned property, that that could be deducted from their paycheck. That's illegal. Um, it can't be done now because of the Virginia Wage Act. That. So that was stricken and taken out. So that, that one, I mean, we don't typically have a problem with that, but that was language that was included that has been eliminated. Um, everything else was language that was added just to bring us under compliance. That answers the question. National Guard used to go out to the soldiers. Did they have that <laughs> for a long time? I didn't know. Terry might be able to do a little more than I can do. No, they'd be shocked. They can't because they haven't brought them forward in lately. <clears throat> no, everything I saw, I didn't see anything that. that, that Especially, you know, reading through it, anything that employees could construe as being disadvantageous to employees. I didn't right. see anything in there. Right. 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 Take that time to issue. <clears throat> Anyone else? 
Do I have a motion? Second. Mr. Muskowski. Aye. Mr. Greenwood. Aye. Mr. Garber. Aye. Mr. Morin. Aye. Chairman Hatcher. Aye. I am indeed. You're still up, aren't you? I am. And discussion of firing July 3rd as the local holiday. Um, there has been some discussion among other localities as well as that, you know, a little bit here and there from the state. Nothing has been taken action on with the governor. Um, but we just thought we would bring it to you to consider um, making July 3rd uh, a local holiday. Um, just since it's on a Monday, July 4th is on a Tuesday, the number of absences will probably be significant. I'm not positive on that. I don't have everybody's itinerary. Um, Hanover, if my understanding is that they are making July 3rd a local holiday. Um, King and Queen is considering it. I spoke to their HR person. Um, I have not heard back from Caroline or from the weekend. I have pulled both of them and didn't receive a response back. So just are directly surrounding counties. It's about 50 days. So we just thought we would bring it to you um, to consider. If you're in favor, we'll bring a resolution. If you're not, we'll come to work. I guess I'll direct one back to you, sure. Have you heard anything from the courts dealing with that? I have not had any questions. Okay. Just one. I know I understand that you, you can work around it either way, correct? That's correct. Mr. Chair, I'm in favor of it. I, in, in government, the, the work that's on your desk the day before a holiday is going to, whatever additional is going to be there, it's just going to have to be done. So I don't have any problem with the holiday. A lot of times. And that is a very important holiday for me. And I think that most Americans also. And I was going to ask the question about absenteeism the day after you answered it. So I'm in favor of it. Well, that and a lot of times you don't, you got one day and then a break. It's not a whole lot. Um, I don't think it's done that. I would make some very, very messy. But I'm in agreement with that. I'm split. I know, I know Wayne and Mary's doing it, so my wife's off, but we are we are not actually going to do it at, at Alpha Modic Plan. We've got a lot of vacation section. There's something there, so we're going to work. Out. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, there's a, I, I'm, I'm you could have paid all of your employees. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering if I said if we do it this time. What says we don't do it for every holiday that falls on a Tuesday or Wednesday? So um, we usually follow the state rules, and the state did not give it off yet. So I'm not for it. But, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but again, I, I'm, I'm fine. I, I teach. We're doing it for a specific reason at the shop. So just because we're going to have a lot of time this with other vacations. So. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. yeah, I've got no It's it's just the uh, first half right? be sure the employees uh, realize uh, that we were thinking about them sure. families and that stuff. And we may not can do it next year. It'll be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, it's uh, when you have these circumstances where you have the Monday, and, and Mr. Greenwood is correct in that, in that I, don't, I don't know that uh, we would be asking for a local uh, resolution because most of the time the state usually does try to limit the time and the space. So, for some reason, they have not chosen this. I still think in the end, the governor probably going to declare it a holiday. I may be surprised. I agree my thoughts also, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah, but uh, uh, no, we're not going to be up here every month asking you to uh, approve a holiday before us. I know a designated day. Well, you, you know, uh, I think we got consensus at least to the resolution. Yeah, we will bring the resolution to you on June the 26th officially, but it would be. Uh, uh, the board's uh, understanding, we will go ahead and communicate that to the employees. Yeah, ahead right. of time. So right. They want to make plans if you're going to invite And then the, the sheriff can also begin the discussion with the court officially and see what their uh, actions might be. Thank you, John. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Just one thing I, I didn't mention, but it is the water tower project that we talked about. This is actually two, start. It is two separate projects. Okay. One is pertains to just the water tower, and right. one is the water line. It's two separate projects. There'll be two separate contracts. Um one the, the water tower project is a little bit further along than what the tower project is, which is fine. Um, we can actually have that water line tied in before the tower is complete, which Schedule wise, we want that anyway. Uh, we're going to have to have that water line there to supply the tower um, to have that line up and running. That's going to be critical anyway. But as of right now, this is uh, going to potential July 10th. It's going to be next month to start advertising for this project. And everything stays on the schedule. Um, by then, we should be able to have a word date. There's hopefully a start date for construction of October. Um, I would say as long as about six to seven months, this ain't going to be complete. Um, the uh, water tower itself is not far behind it. Uh, DEQ's held that one up a little bit longer. Uh, actually, the Department of Health has held this up a little bit longer, but uh, as far as everything else, we're still working on some preliminary stuff for the state system. Uh, and that will put you right behind the advertised date for the water line. Any questions? That sounds like it's coming along. Yeah, it's <laughs> just out of curiosity now. The present system will it be tied in with this at all? Yes. So if you had to, this tower, the other one went down for some reason. You could that. You yes, exactly. That's the whole point of having this. We've got maybe it's stuff that we have to shut this one we have now down in the future. As well, I see this one up in the money. So. I do have a question tonight about this. <laughs> well, where are we at with that? Are we getting bids or are we satisfied with the repairs? We got, we got a bid in today. Okay. We had one better bid in time. Um, and he's bid at 985, somewhere well under what we originally thought at the hundred fifty thousand. Who wanted to the SCADA system for the central garage? The SCADA, yeah. who monitors them? We do. We do all. We do our jobs. If we have issues, we've got, um, we use a uh, power plug. They come out, we have any issues, and they, they work on our stuff now. But we keep a tight line here on. If something's messing up, we can you know, identify it. Back to this well. Uh, is the bidding over, or, or is it, it is? So we only have one bid. We have until we, we sent out for six. Okay. And I think of all that was a time frame. The reason why was just don't have time. They didn't have time. The right. ones that I did talk to, it's for to be able to get to it in an emergency style fashion, like what we need. Are you, are you familiar with this company? Yes, you are. Yeah. I've heard good things. Okay. I have no personal work in mind, but they're reputable. Destroy it all. Okay. They yeah. did my will not to in my house. Um, he's supposed to be on Wednesday. We'll get it. We'll have a little schedule in the next two weeks. That's what my plan is. And when we got it set up, it shouldn't be no interruption to the county where we put it online. They know what the estimated depth for that one. That one there was 460, I think, and it should be right around the same. Do they have to move the location of well, the, the new one will be outside the building. The one that there is there okay. out is inside of that well house. We're just going to come into the wall. We will have it all, all pipe will be insulated. Sorry about all these questions that didn't pertain to what you were here. Well, you're actually fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, it's been a while since I've been up in front of you, gentlemen, to talk. We've got a lot of projects that we have completed, a few that we're still working on. Um, I gave you a summary and just to, to touch on a few things. Um, most everyone knows we've made a transition over to the dock yard. 
domain, not only with our website, but also our county emails. Um, that is putting us in line with fusion company and state regulations. In case we're ever at a breach, uh, we have the uh, backing of the .gov uh, domain from fusion company, as well as insurance looks uh, better whenever we're in line with the domains that they would like to push. Less tight. Sir? Less tight. Correct. It is less tight. Um, unless your first and last name is a little longer, but there, yeah. Who would you be talking about? Uh, <laughs> the Motorola radio system was a very large project that we undertook. Took about a year longer than we wanted it to uh, due to COVID reasons and just not being able to get parts in. We are online 100% and have been actually for almost a year now. Um, but as we move forward, there's some other things that we're adding to it. We just received a quote this past week uh, that we were discussing to put repeaters in the three schools um, right up the street here, King William Public Schools, as well as the two schools at West Point. So if emergency services need to go into those buildings, then they will be fully covered. Uh, the reason why the high school, King William County High School, is not on this list, uh, the tower there at the high school fully saturates that entire building. Uh, they could not find a single spot. I think we talked about this, but just to reiterate, they could not find a single spot in that building that they could not uh, get a signal. So they've done something special to the antennas of being down versus no. It's an omni. It, it is not an umbrella style. So uh, good news is, is Nestle factory is also 100% covered. They couldn't find a spot in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Food line. We actually had um, Steve Gardner walk into the uh, meat area. Uh, he was not welcome back there, but he did anyway. He used the radio and it worked. So. There are several places that we do not need to put repeaters, but of course, these three schools, you, you step 15 feet into them. Um, they have radios inside. They have their own system for the school. So it's not like they don't have coverage right now, but for emergency services, um, this will help them. So we'll be talking through that. Um, Mr. Ashcraft and Mr. Hutchins and I met recently with Hanover County. I believe you all are aware of that. We're working through some negotiations just now that we have our own towers here in the county, um, we are not 100% reliant on Hanover, so we're just fine tuning uh, the contract that we have with them. Um, and hopefully, we'll be able to reduce some of our payment. Um, we have a UEM that we're putting in place, just to let you know, allows us to monitor our four tower sites that we have here in the county. Uh, environmental issues if the door gets left open, an AC unit doesn't cut along. Very rarely will a heater kick on in there because the devices produce their own heat. But in case uh, generators, lights, emergency power, uh, different things like that, we will be installing that. Have not heard back from Motorola. We're waiting for them to put us on the list, and that will be installed in dispatch, and they will be able to monitor those four tower sites 24/7. Um, Any questions so far? The uh, handle uh, county contract. How often is that negotiated? Is that yearly or is it a long term contract? I know we are looking to renegotiate <clears throat> because of the. Well, yeah. excuse me. Um, well, sure. what we're doing now is not negotiating the contract itself, it's the, it's the method of payment mm -hmm. and the amount of the payment. And um, we're going to be successful in getting a lower, a lower rate. Right now, we're paying about $300. $62 or $1,000 a year. Um, we feel pretty good that that will be at least 100000 or more uh, in the first year. And then ultimately, uh, we will continue to go down uh, after there is an escalator in year two and year three, just as we have in other, other contracts that we have. Are you saying down to a hundred thousand? Are you saying down a no, hundred thousand? Down one hundred thousand. Uh, left. That's that's uh, looks like that we we've been uh, discussing the subscribers, uh, discussing uh, our usage, uh, where we've uh, been able to make improvements, and uh, it's it's been it's been a very positive discussion. Uh, I think at some point uh, this county is going to have to look at how much we want to continue to rely on our neighbor. Uh, I don't think that decision is, is tomorrow, but uh, uh, 
Uh, it may be advantageous for a, a study to, to take place in a couple of years as to what it would take if we wanted to have our own uh, system and rely independently. Others are doing that successfully, even smaller than what we are. And uh, and talking with the sheriff and his personnel, it, it certainly would be something that uh, uh, would function much better for them because there's certain things that happen in the course of duty that we still have to rely on handle. And uh, if we had our own uh, independent system, we could make we could probably react a little more quickly. Um, Sheriff can well help me on that, but that's that's a, that's down the road. That's obviously that's a, that's a costly investment. But I think it is worth a, uh, a study in maybe 18 months or, or two years just to see where we might go. You may not know, and I don't know, but would that reduce the rain if Hanover was not the actual rain? It probably would, wouldn't it? Would it if we're on our own job. If we're on our own towers, as long as Hanover worked with us and put us in as mutual aid, as we transport back and forth through our county and allow us on their channels. And we're having discussions with them right now regarding us being able to put our rate. Right now, we're on their system, so you know, it, as soon as we kick into their county, we pick up on their towers. I, I know the sheriff's department, mental whatever, they go a long way. Probably wouldn't go as far as they go sometime. Well, I will say this: when we did the um, the testing, and we completely removed, um, we had four radios that we were doing for testing. They only received a signal from our four towers. Captain Hamilton was outside the parking deck at MCV, and he was still getting a signal from the high school tower. Now, conditions were probably really good. Wouldn't rely on that 100% of the time. What floor was he on? <laughs> right. Uh, he said he drove uh, pretty much from Airport Drive uh, to 95 on 295, and there was was able to communicate with this past four times. So, yes, to answer your question, we would lose um, if, if Hanover, if, if we stepped away and Hanover didn't allow us access to their towers, we would. But they're normally doing that, right? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there would be no reason for them not to work with us. But, I mean, the answer to your question. So. They're probably in the new pen also, I would think. Well, new pen's on Harris. Yeah, new pen's on Harris. Yeah, new new they, they don't have patches for that. They do. Yeah. And they allow them as long as as long as you're running the same encryption that Hanover requires, they'll allow you to patch through on their channels. No. <clears throat> One thing I would suggest asking is, is is there a growth restriction? How much can they grow and still maintain? So we can factor that into our future planning. As in the departments? As in the spectrum, if they have more resources starting to uh, <clears throat> saturate their system, is there a point where they're going to have to spend a lot of money and maybe probably stay simple? Look at that. I assume you're the video, but this is all video. Yes, sir. So, plenty of, plenty of spectrum. Well, that was the purpose of moving into the yeah. spectrum in the first place. They run out of bandwidth. Lower band, plus they want to reclaim it for same free as you get still. That old system was antiquated as well. Well, and, and, and prior to us going live with these towers, we had 40, about 40% 40 of the county was covered. We're at 98%. Now, remember in West Point, it, it also was called for help two blocks from dispatch, and it didn't work on that old, it's just old. I don't even know what year that stuff came in. But anyway, um, Edmonds, successes and challenges. Um, yes, Edmonds is successfully working for us. We still do have our challenges. Mr. Ashcraft and Mr. Hudgens and I speak quite often about <clears throat> working with Edmonds to not only get a better um, service agreement for us, uh, but also find out why we keep having um, a couple of departments that have continuous issues. and. Edmonds has worked with us on uh, giving more training. They've also listened to us. They've made a few changes on their end. So um, it is still not 100%, but it's much better than it was the last time we spoke. Would, would any software be 
Probably not. Tyler Muniz, I, I hear complaints all across the state. Uh, it would cost us about a million dollars to get Tyler Muniz. And we, <laughs> I talked to the, or I want to email group IT directors all over the county or all over the state. They complain about every software that is out there. Not all of them are 100% for localities. We have so many different departments, different things that we're doing. <clears throat> some of them are financially based. Some of them are based more for tax, and then they try to bring in other aspects. So, excuse my voice. I spent the weekend in Jersey and breathed in some more Canadian air while we were there. Well, I thought you were yelling at the kid. <clears throat> well, I was yelling at the kid too. We were there for soccer game. Um, any questions with Evans? Yeah. I'll never not be back. <laughs> it will also never be. I mean, I had, like I said, uh, Jermaine's office and Abby's office are still having complaints. So, I mean, they're having trouble with the downloads for the DMV stuff. I mean, Abby's having trouble. I mean, so the download for DMV, I spent a few days with Karina. We also spoke with the um, Deputy Commissioner of Revenue from Essex and got on the phone with a uh, Edmonds representative at the same time. We understand why the process for DMV takes so much longer for King William County than it does for Essex. <clears throat> Unless we're willing to go one tax rate across the whole county, like Essex has, that would reduce their time in half. Um, Essex and the Tappahan, they don't have separate tax rates like we do with King, with uh, West Point. I was going to say a split levy issue, right? But not even really a solvable <laughs> issue, though. Which is why when Karina originally was complaining and frustrated, Edmonds didn't understand the issue until they sat down and understood how they listened to us finally after a way too long, understood our processes and how we were doing things, and either even the uh, deputy commissioner. And Essex didn't realize that we had two separate tax rates. And they have a 14-page DMV download. We have a 26-page. So therefore, it's going to take longer to get one. But then the fact that you have two separate tax rates, um, she understood, the lady from Essex understood it either. So it's nothing that can Edmonds can do. Well, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to say it seems like that's something that only they can do something. It's only they can do it. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, we're in that hole with them where we're the only locality requesting it. They're not going to spend extra time in development to fix it. We're working on that too. And is it getting better? Better than being here. But one of the things, like I told Travis, on our old system break, dog tags used to take like seconds to issue and now it takes 15 minutes to issue one dog tag and Edmonds told us that they aren't doing anything to make it any better well that's what kills me and, and not that I've spent a whole lot of time in the financial software it's just not, not what we do here but you know right for all of its antiquation it seemed to just work at least work well enough that I never really got any complaints from anybody about Bright other than, my God, it's old. Um, so I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I understand why there was a push to go away from it because there was, you know, it seemed like it might not be long for this world at one point in time, but it is frustrating. Um, <clears throat> very much to have supposedly purpose built software that's not fulfilling its purpose. Because did, did Essex have any input on, on what Abby was talking about with the uh, dog tags? Because they, they issue dog tags every day. So, so do they have a solution how they have done Every locality that, because I've had localities reach out to me as well and ask what my frustrations are. And I've told, we all have the same frustrations and they're getting the same thing from Edmonds. And supposedly Edmonds says until they have a lot of complaints, they won't do anything about it. That's what we're being the old, told. You're the only one we've heard from about this, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like um, the shelter gives us a month's worth of dog tags at the end of the month, or like at the beginning of the month. And it literally takes one employee in my office to enter those for almost half the day. Where it used to take minutes. Well, 
here's a question. Can, can your association aggregate some of these complaints? I mean, I know that may, might not necessarily be their area that they, they operate in. Like but, the Treasurer's Association? Yeah. We have. Uh, but admins just keep saying they're not doing anything about like dog tags. That's what we keep getting back from them, that they're not putting anything more into that side. So I guess my question is, Essex, are they experiencing, they only admins also, they're experiencing the same problem with the dog tags? They don't, yes sir. Okay. You have to go through on Bright, it was one one place you entered it. In Edmonds, it's three. You have to enter the, the owner's information, then the dog's information, then the license information. So you're entering three different screens where we used to do one. It's not just those two. I'm sure. Yeah. Matt Mellon's department is frustrated. He sat down with Essex. They still hand write tickets. They don't use Edmonds to do it because it takes them twice as long to enter into Edmonds than it does to handwrite the ticket when they do inspection. And again, um, it, it's easy to brush it off as no software is perfect, but the imperfections do seem glaring. Um, so I, I'm not sure if you're aware of, I'm assuming you are, but we, we actually invited uh, Edmonds here. Uh, it's been a few months ago. Uh, two representatives came. One is the uh, director of service. And we sat down and we had them here for pretty much the whole day. Each department came in, sat with them, had about a half hour or so, I think, each department that wanted to talk to them, schools were involved, and, and laid out the issues that they had. Some things they were able to help us with. Um, we received a plan of action from them. More than half of the items were um, not planning, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, not planning on doing anything in the next 12 months. Some of the other items were uh, still discussing with team and then other things they either had a resolution for or said there's nothing. Is there just not a lot of competition in this field? Is that what's going on? And well, there is. It just depends on how much money you spend. Well, on that sure. That's the key right there is the amount of money some of the others are. Like I said, we're paying for Bright before and it did everything we wanted to do and they didn't go out of business. So why don't we just go back to Bright? There, there, there is the aspect of the data transfer nightmare that would be incurred anytime we move anything over. And I, and I get that. Um, well, we'll say this about Bright, though. We, when we were making the transition, we did reach out to them towards the end and ask if we could extend our contract with them for six months a year or a month to month basis. But we'd lose access to it while we did this transition. Whenever we received a phone call, an email, or nothing back, not only the vice president, but also from the owner of the company. They didn't even entertain us asking to stay on board. We were willing to pay the same amount. We weren't asking for a reduced cost. We were just asking to go month to month, especially with the uh, tax and also the permitting because they were the last three to come on board. The other department, the financial departments had a year with it, roughly a year before we went live, uh, seven months, I believe. But they did not. Uh, we were clients of theirs for the 20 some years. So, I'm glad you broke it. I, I had not heard that. Yes, sir. I've got my emails and phone calls to them. I believe you. I'm just saying, I've never heard that. That we even tried it. We sure did. But Edmonds is the same. They're not helping us either. So correct. So why why did we change? I know what I remember is we were told that Bright was going. To, they were not doing any of. Is what I remember. And they still have them. They haven't upgraded their software. They're not going to. They're holding on to as many clients as they can until they're gone. Was anybody here that uh, it was on a budget work session day? It might have been the previous term. We got that letter from the, the, the Bright president that sent out all of his clients saying, despite the rumors, Bright's not, not going anywhere. And I was like, well, this is the classic Bright's getting ready to go out of business. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, there, there were signs that there were going to be issues there going forward. Um, yeah. That's what prompted us to start researching other, other avenues. So by what you're saying, they really. But I said we. It really I mean, not. We at board level, we weren't involved in the procurement. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Point, they, they put all the money into this. There's there's zoo that they started. And like I said, people that got Edmonds, a lot of departments had maybe a year, but Commissioner of Revenue and Treasurer's Office had maybe a month. 
and then it was shut off. So I don't know how anybody can get anything done when you take a software and it doesn't transfer over and all the stuff has to be in at once and at none. And then we're told that well, the numbers don't match and they don't work together. Well, it wasn't a perfect world, but when Evans did get shut off, before we did that, we were able to download in PDF and um, Excel right. spreadsheet all the data. I mean, right. I'm, what did I say? And I'm sorry, before Bright was shut down, we did download all the data for the tax department. Did yeah. anybody check to see if it's still working? Maybe they just never checked. Yeah, yeah. shut aside. <laughs> and, um, I would have guessed you would have done it. We dove as far as we could go um, after we took them offline. I don't know. I know you guys are on it. it, it it's frustrating for us to constantly hear the complaints, and I, and I know that you guys are working hard on it. It, it would just be. It would be nice if our level of commitment to getting this working was met by the vendor. Um, but but I don't know what the solution is. The solution almost certainly isn't it, it's it's point point it's necessarily changing. Um, that because that's pretty drastic. Um, you know, the solution is probably to keep chipping away at the problems until we get them solved. But um, but it is it, it's frustrating for all involved, including us, and we don't even have to work on it. <laughs> keep, Hopefully, the next time our report will get a little better. Keep complaining. Yes, sir. Okay, moving on. Unless there's another question. Keyless entry and security cameras. Um, as most of you know, we have installed uh, on four different buildings and we've upgraded the courthouse with new keyless entries. They just replaced the old system, put in a new system, um, upgraded all of the old cameras that were there to digital cameras. We've added several cameras in places. Um, one in this room now, there's multiple in this building. You're not walking in this building or around this building without us having security now. We have an audit trail. It's 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 a good system, it's working well, that I'm aware of. Sheriff hasn't called me to let me know. And then the reason why I look now is they, they finished at the, the, at the courthouse Friday uh, or Thursday, I'm sorry. Uh, there are only a few things, which are the intercoms that were waiting to come in. Uh, that will be put in place. Other than that, these uh, phase one is up and running. Also, having the museum as well as historical society, court services, those are the building uh, and this building, the ALIT office, um, the satellite office at the sheriff's. It's also a camera there now. Is the museum or any of those have a launch for like fire? They do, but not on this system. The museum has their own system. The museum actually has their own internal camera system. Uh, we look at putting cameras in, but they just updated uh, the cameras in there, went digital with, and I can't remember the name of the company uh, that they went with. So we did not add or take away cameras um, for that current system. It's, it's completely taken care of. We just put um, keyless entry and then a camera outside. But yes, they do have a fire alarm system as well as door alarm. We also included ADA compliant for the front door of this building. Um, as you guys know, when you come in, we now have the ability to push the button for the door to open. Um, so that is something that new that we have added. We've signed and implemented a new print contract. We, with the way costs went up, each department was running out of toner costs basically throughout the year. Toner doubled, in some cases tripled in cost. So we did a cost analysis with four different companies and settled on one, uh, ESI Xerox. We've uh, had six devices delivered to us that we're putting in place uh, strategically in different departments that will bring down the cost. So they're not only just getting new devices, but also we brought every device that we have that we're not replacing under a cost or copy. No department's going to have to just go out and buy a toner on their own. Name has been included at a cost for copy for all printers in this building, um, as well as the fire station and parks and rec. Sheriff's office, they just got a new device not long ago. So as that contract expires, we'll talk with them about if they want to come onto this contract. We've been asked in the past about maybe going in with the schools or something so the whole county could maybe save some money. Was that ever looked into or that well, doesn't work? Oh. Matter of fact, Southern Copier is who the schools use. We actually had the representative that uh, Ms. Longus uses come and, uh, and, and quote this on it, quote us on it. Um, 
they were a little prouder of their pricing than uh, we wanted them to be. So they unfortunately didn't apply. And we even asked if we, even though we're separate, treat it as a bundle and it's ESI can make a better, better company. Uh, GSI improvements. Um, I know we're still working through some things to put it live, but I know Sherry's been working closely with uh, Timmons on getting flood zones, soil levels, Chesapeake Bay preservation areas um, listed on our GIS maps. There's just different layers that we're adding, uh, not only help us here at the county, but also help citizens. And I'm pretty sure they got those up on the testing environment and they were to make sure. So as long as she signs off on that, we'll, we'll be able to make those go live. Also with GIS, we've been working with West Point. They have asked for some additional info to be put on their parcel detail pages that were not currently on there. And I was working with Karina. Um, I also reached out to Betty today and I think we're just waiting on the, a report to be generated to be able to turn that over. And then um, we'll be able to, to get that data uh, sent over to West Point and they'll have all the additional information that they're looking for. Chromebooks for Board of Supervisors. Three of you are still dodging me. We'll get you in here at some point to get your Chromebook. I think Chris is going to be helping set that. And actually, no, and actually, no, I'm not, not by anybody. I, I, I did take the point. Well, okay. I sat by your office twice. <laughs> and you were done. Oh, oh, so it's on Dina. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the good thing is, is we got those in, in here and we've got them all set up. So we'll be able to get those over to you guys because I know the iPads just were not working for you. So, sir, for some people. No, I'm going to let mine at home. <laughs> bring, the, bring the iPad when you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Charger, I guess. And then, um, look, I mean, the problems I was having with the Apple was. It wouldn't keep the emails in there. You couldn't search the new one, all that stuff. Good. Okay. You can search for multiple upgrade. It would be much like happened. a week's work. I'm like, this is not good. Okay. Yeah. Travis, there was a security aspect to getting Chromebooks, I believe. From so yes or no. There was no security issue. For us to obtain them or to, to put them in place. To migrate to no, no, there was no security. We, we, um, what we ended up doing, uh, Google operating system does not mesh well with Windows operating system, so we just had to create a Chrome Enterprise account for the county. So you guys, we, we have everything, updates, patching, all that is being taken care of. It's just not going through Active Directory like we use here. It's going through Chrome Enterprise. <clears throat> so no, when the security issues, it was just. We were trying to make it all work on one system and they just don't like it. They don't work nicely together. Cybersecurity. Um, a lot of things have been going on. Then put in a, a very good start to a system that, that we are still using today. Uh, you guys haven't met Todd Persigan, who is our, um, you guys have all that Democratic perfect. He's doing great. Uh, picking up where Ben started putting new things in place. We're updating our infrastructure to be able to <clears throat> manage in-house. Code Blue did a good job for us. Uh, nothing wrong with the equipment that they had. Uh, it was just put in place to be able to be managed off-site and we don't want to have that vulnerability. So we're bringing everything in-house, uh, replacing switches, firewalls, infrastructure, and being able to manage all that. <clears throat> Todd has set that up. Everything's working well. We are on the new firewall, on two of the new switches, and we're we've got nine total that we're that we're replacing throughout our county buildings. Uh, end of life software replacement, things that have just been around for a long time. <clears throat> a lot of people use Adobe. We were on a 2017 version. They stopped patching it eight months ago. Just provides vulnerabilities. We're on new Adobe now, um, and just other softwares like that. That was just one that that was kind of a big one. That's, more across all the departments rather than just individual departments. Continuing education. Um, Todd has certifications in server switches, uh, most of Cisco, uh, which does transfer over pretty well to our new systems. Uh, but we are doing um, some point in advanced training for him 
uh, for the new implement or the new equipment that we have in place. Uh, I have signed up for a cybersecurity leadership program that's going to be put on Nico. Uh, that will, we have the infrastructure in place, we have the software in place. All the business talk to you guys about all that. It's the same stuff moving forward. Uh, but, you know, cybersecurity is new every day, something new comes out. So we're trying to just make sure we stay ahead of that with educating ourselves and staying at the forefront of that. Last but not least, we're going to put new phones in place. Uh, Verizon has already told us that the copper PR line, PRI lines that are coming in here are no longer going to be supported in about eight to 12 months. So we are going um, voice over IP and looking to get that started or soon. So people will notice new phones. Um, um, the numbers will stay the same. We know it works on our system. Mr. Moran and his wife was kind enough to let us use her as our first one at the museum. And uh, we were able to put that phone online on our network and it's been working fine. Where did you put it, Abney? I thought that was over after. So it's converted. So the copper that comes into this building goes into a server that gets converted to through the MITEL system. And it gets pushed out over voice over IP, but we are still, we've got two pair of coppers coming in here, just like the old style that powers all of that. That's all I have, unless you guys have some questions. It's a little long, that's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. You know, that's why I said we, it's been a while. I, I appreciate you guys. I've had to push this back a couple of times. Um, and the responsibilities with the kids. Appreciate that. You guys have any questions? You know, now that you covered any questions ahead while we were talking, but uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks. You do a lot, and uh, it's appreciated. It's really is. Thank you. Thanks, Travis. I'll set up an appointment maybe in the next year. So I'll try to make sure I'm there. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Next item is G, Bookstore Transfer Station Project Update. is almost done. Contractors have completed their work. Um, it is now just that Vipsa uh, is cleaning things up, doing the last few odds and ends. Um, <clears throat> I've got on here where I had spoken to them a couple weeks ago and thought that the date would be June, uh, June 19th. That's not a hard date uh, now. I spoke to them uh, on Friday and um, they're going to be doing a lot of work tomorrow. The site's closed tomorrow. And uh, they're going to be trying to wrap up everything they, they can tomorrow. Um, but they'll know at the end of the day tomorrow if they're going to have to take another Tuesday to finish everything up or not. Um, they're going to be painting arrows and lines on the pavement, uh, installing the equipment. They've been looking at uh, hiring some uh, cleaning to clean up the area because everything new is downstream of the old dumpster. So even though it's nice and new, it still has a bit of a smell. So they're trying to get everything. So the class was asked to try to bring up that slide and show us while he's speaking. Is that the, uh, uh, the, the attachment still in view, I think. It's going to take too much time. To go I just kind of like this, if you could go into the flow, anticipate the flow. You can just go keep talking and I'll bring it up. Okay. Well, I don't think we have a whole lot else to say. Well, I I'll, I'll just say that this, this has been in the works for a long time and we have had fits and starts and challenges that we've had to overcome to get this done. And this is a big deal, actually. This is going to be one of those things that everybody's going to forget about in the year, like what accomplished here but this is this is gonna be a big deal for this this site you know think about how important is throwing trash in the dump but this has been a big inconvenience and was becoming a safety hazard um to, to you know especially the entryway there and so uh this is going to be a really big change for that site and a, and a big convenience for people that are using it and it was the best option i think we had I just learned, is there like beat up? I mean, I know it, hopefully this will prevent the back house, but is there any way we could get a turn lane there? Or because it's got three lanes, maybe a turn, maybe go to the right rather because when people do back up, 
there's no way to get around. Oh, I didn't know if they talked to him. You mean out on the highway? Yeah, on 30. We haven't gone that route because that would have been really who pays, who pays the turn lane, see? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen beat that thing for a turn lane. Moment. Yeah, the uh, us, and there's a bit of a, a drop off there. Um, you know, but our hope was that if we uh, we might be able to work out the deal at some point of going through where the bus garage is right now, the uh, schools to go into the back way at some future time. But we're still hopeful that um, more than hopeful that this solution will be good for a while. Well, I mean, it should, but it, it's not. That's not the only time that there's a problem. The problem is when before it's open, people are lined um, up. Mr. Ashburn brought open. that to my attention right. uh, just yesterday. Okay, the other day. Um, <laughs> and and I said the paper right now the hours there start at nine in the morning, yeah. whereas at the other location it's seven, seven or so. Yeah. And then I go to they go a little bit later there, so mm -hmm. maybe it's something to consider about having hours there. So we're just queuing. This should help. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, in a second photograph, third, I'm sorry, it's two empty concrete pads. That's going to be additional equipment for dumpsters. Right? So these those two pads right two here, two pads those are going to be the recycling canisters. Okay. So, these yeah. two right here are going to be moved downhill to uh -huh. here. So, everybody that wants to pull in and back up into this area, now we'll have the inside lane to turn in and then have an easy backup. And everyone else can pass and go on to either side. This is a, going to be a second compactor okay. or pull over and, okay. and okay. do so the recycle. Yeah, that'll be Yeah, that will. But the original ones will still be accepted. The recycles will be moved. So that's the recycles will be moved. So it will change the whole flow of traffic right. around right there. So yeah. now there are going to be two loops, really. Yeah, that'll be good. And two lanes. Can't believe they did it so bad. <laughs> they had to remove. Well, a lot of dirt, right? Any further questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, the same things we've been talking about, like some electricity, which we've had updates on internet, but still, I'm not satisfied with. I mean, Everybody done by February. That it's still not knowing who's first, who's second. Nobody's been signed up. Like the electric companies are doing a lot of work, but that's as far as it goes. I mean, they came to my mom's house a month ago, and the fields were too wet, so they got stuck. They said they'd be back this month. They did come back this month. Now they got the wires all pulled, and they got those big loops where those boxes are going. But to anybody's houses, I don't think there's anything yet. So I don't know how they're gonna, and plus those wires aren't connected to anything. So I'd like better updates or maybe addresses, but I guess we've already talked about that. We haven't gone online. They don't, they can't give us anything. So it's a new point. And then about the library, we've got new things in about that. I mean, I mean, I guess we, I don't know, maybe that's coming up in another meeting, but I know the last meeting we had, Tom Shepley, the lady told us that they were going to have a library board meeting on whether to kick King and Queen out themselves. I don't know what I heard when they get kicked out, but they're not they're still in. I mean, if they were, I don't know, are we going to have to pay the difference? I mean, it doesn't make any sense if they get kicked out. All that stuff should be subtracted and the, it should be the same amount that the people left that we're paying now, but I don't think that's going to be the case. You were talking about King and Queen. Yeah, they, they have, it, I'm going to say temporarily back down. And apparently are going to pay. Sorry, I'm jumping on your time. Oh, they're going to pay. Pull them out. They they're going to pull out of the not leaving oh. that that request. But they've already cut back. Like I said, when we cut back. They shut our hours fifty percent. So that's what well, we talked about last. They're going to pay it this year. Is what I'm hearing. Pull them out. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. okay. Well, if that's the case. That would be good. Like I said, we were discussing. But I don't think it ends. What they're they're planning is not. They they still want to continue forward with establishing their own library. 
if they're they willing to to work with the with the system right to, to eat to ease the cost that's best that they can um, so they're they're reviewing their proposal so temporarily and that temporarily could be 12 months about could be less could be longer but at least for right now they are going to be a member of the system for FY24, which starts July 1, and they are going to be a paying member at the, at the first stage and, and at the, the rate in which uh, the library system has, has established for them. So we won't be visiting that issue for a while okay. until they come back with, a, yeah. uh, with another proposal. Okay, that explains it. And that's all I have about this. So everybody coming up from June 10th. We're gonna be out here in Walmart. So thanks everybody for coming. Right. Um same steam on the internet front. Yeah, you know, I think at this point in time, I don't think it's unreasonable to be getting monthly updates. Um, you know, about where uh, the project is. We can all see the work that Dominion's doing. Uh would love to know what all points is doing, um, you know, behind the scenes to get ready to do their part if they're gonna bring the thing home in the next. At this point in time, we're seven months out from their putting their drop dead date. So, um, what else? Uh, the peddler's license issue. Let's let's go ahead and push and find a solution to, to, to how we get that statute interpreted in a way that at least I believe it should be interpreted. Um, you know, jumping from a thirty dollars business license to a two hundred fifty dollars peddler's license, you know, is uh, I don't know. It struck me as odd, and I, and I don't agree with the interpretation. And I think that there's Probably some opportunity to, I'm not even going to say clean up because to me it's perfectly clear, but if we can insert language that we can to clarify um, what the intent of statute is. Um, there's one other thing. I usually make notes, but I didn't it. Um, well, I'll go ahead and, and uh, shamelessly uh, let everybody know that a lot of you have been, that I've been coaching my daughter's penny softball team. They won their bracket. In the tournament. So if Tower Energy is listening, um, they want to use some of my audio, they can go ahead and insert that in the story, or they can even do a feature on it. So they want. Um, that's it. That's going to be a Right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah. uh, 180 for a full. Steve, this is for you. Uh, I spoke to Clyde Christman, I think about a week and a half ago, and he told me he was going to call you. Uh, did he? Did you all have a conversation about landing? Um, Anywhere, landing road, Newcastle road. He said that he thought that at one point in time that was a state maintained road. Did he tell you that? Yes. Did you find out anything about that? I he said started that started looking into it. I have not found anything definitive on the end of that of this private property now, as mm -hmm. far as anything. Was it old. if it ever was state maintained, I guess the, the board of supervisors at whatever time would have had to request that it come out of state maintenance? Is, is that the way it works? That it be abandoned? I'm not sure with those old roads. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was just thing. talking to him on the phone and I didn't see what, what we he were was going to have a follow up meeting last Friday and we had to postpone. I have more information on that soon. Yeah, that, that area would be great if, if someone put in a canoe or kayak or off of a, a landing road there, did the flood. You know, that we need a pickup point somewhere. But that's all. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gary Wisconsin, I uh, happened to kind of change with uh, the breeze line yesterday. They are going to try to develop. A, an application like all points does where you put in your address and they'll come back and say yes you're in our service and you know you're not and so they're working on that they have been doing a substantial amount of what they call walkouts where they're checking the poles you notice a lot of poles have been replaced um, down in, in pretty much every area of the county uh, as far as you heard uh, all points talk about the fire service areas when they like those it's all contingent on dominion and Rappahannock getting getting things ready for that piece of it. It is frustrating. And, and I'm sure Mr. Hudgens and I will continue to uh, pressure them as much as possible. Um,
we are going to work, Mr. Hudgens and I need to work on the new NTIA B program, broadband, equity, access, and deployment. $65 billion program. So it's a, we owe DHCD some information here shortly. We'll jump on that. Thank you. I guess I got a question for you, starting off with my statement. I know the town was not included in, in the upgrade from up here. Hold on. But yet they did go through town. I think they're headed to a place in the county that they have to go through town. Oh, yeah, it's all physical fiber. It's not, yeah. it's not mirrors and smoke. No, but I, I'm saying though, they had to go through town to get to that location. But the golden rule with these federal and state contracts is that you don't overbuild, you can't overbuild. Mm -hmm. Well, right. We're also talking about Dominion Fiber at this point in time. This whole project is predicated on Dominion it was running fiber to all of their substations and all of that with that one in town right there next to the block uh, being included in all of that. So the Dominion Fiber aspect of it was always going to go through that. Well, it's to all points. And I just was going to see the uh, farm. Going to Headed back that way. Well, they got all those transfer lines coming back there. I bet they're trying to hook up with those way across the road. Could be. Yeah. Anyway, also, I did find out that Cox does not have proprietary. The only thing they have is to offer cable. But they, anybody else could come in. Yeah, but maybe that's a future project because yeah. I've, had no, several, I've had several people ask, well, I don't, I don't like uh, Breeze Lines um, nationwide success or what do you call it? The, 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 uh, how well they operate and support customers. I don't like the 1%. You, know, you don't have anything now. <laughs> it's, right. But uh, it, it's those kinds of questions. But right now, the golden rule is you can't overbuild just to have a choice. One day, maybe. And I think the only other thing I got, uh, I appreciate being invited to Juneteenth, but I will be out of town. Just want everybody to know that. We had uh, already made reservations for family. I think Mr. Morton will step in to take care of it. On behalf of the board, and we, I thank you and the board. Yeah, uh, that's about all I have. Anybody is still getting signatures? June twentieth is approaching. And I guess that's by midnight. I don't. I really don't know whether it's five o'clock or midnight. You, I don't know. And you wait until midnight, Alice is gonna whoop you. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't think it's that. Who is uh, all I can say is there's two people qualified in district. So, uh, it's your turn. I think we're done. Yeah, close that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move to convene a closed meeting in accordance with 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia to consider a personnel matter involving the appointment of individuals to boards and commissions, the employment of, spe of a specific employee, and the resignation of a specific employee. And in accordance with section 2.2-3711A3 of the Code of Virginia regarding real property used for a public purpose, specifically pertaining to the acquisition of real property for a public purpose. Thank you. Any discussion? Great. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Morey? Aye. Mr. Muskowski? Aye. Chairman Hyde? Aye. All right, folks, we will hopefully not be real long. Oh, reading back the order. Uh, Mr. Chair, maybe we reconvene an open session. Second. Chris. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Morin? Aye. Mr. Muskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Chairman Hatcher? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that's our one. Second. Chris. Mr. Morin? Aye. Mr. Muskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Chairman Hatcher? Aye. Thank you, Lacey. All right, Stephen, I think you got your motion. Okay. Resolution 23 42, appointments, reappointments to Planning Commission, whereas there are two current 
terms on the planning commission expiring during 30 2023, which are currently held by Donnie J. Height of District 2 and Donald M. Wagner of District 5 and where Ms. Mrs. Height and Mr. Wagner and Beach express their desire for reforming and whereas no application additional applicants from District 2 have expressed interest in serving on the planning commission and Ms. Height has offered to serve a short one year term in order to prevent two terms expiring in the same year. And whereas one additional applicant from District 5 has expressed interest in serving on the Planning Commission, Otto Williams, and whereas others who have expressed interest in serving on the Planning Commission, all are from District 3 and include David Kaplan, Elizabeth Copeland, Gary Crawford, and Jamie Rose. And whereas voters who have now desires to make appointments. Read line 11. There's a, there's a, on this, on this, on this, on this tab, there's not there. Oh, sorry. Uh, whereas two additional applicants. From District 5 has expressed interest in serving on the Planning Commission, Tim Vaughn and Otto Williams, and whereas others who have expressed interest in serving on the Planning Commission are all from District 3, and including David Kappen, Elizabeth Copeland, Gary Crawford, and Jamie Rose, and whereas the Board of Supervisors now desires to make appointments, reappointments to these positions, and how be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors, Kingland County, Virginia, that Bonnie J. Height be reappointed to the Planning Commission. Representing different district two for a one year term ending June 30th, 2024, in order to return the position to a staggered expiration. And be it further resolved that Otto Williams be appointed, reappointed, reappointed to the Planning Commission representing District 5 for a four year term ending June 30th, 2027. Don't just go up there, June 2023. All of them do it one at a time. Just do one at a time. Yeah. So move. Second. Mr. Miskowski. Aye. Mr. Greenwood. Aye. Mr. Garber. Aye. Mr. Morin. Aye. Chairman Hodges. Aye. Resolution 2343 appointment, reappointment to the Economic Development Authority. Resolution appointment, reappointment to the Economic Development Authority Board of Directors, whereas I'll just read the last part. Right. Now, therefore, be from the Board of Supervisors of King Wayne County that. Tim Holder, Tim Holder is appointed, yeah. reappointed to the Economic, Economic Development Authority Board of Directors for unexpired term ending June 30th, 2027. Done this 12th day of June 2023. Second. Mr. Greenland? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Morin? Aye. Mr. Skowski? Aye. Chairman Hodges? Aye. Resolution 23 44. Appointment, reappointment to the Middle Peninsula Regional Airport Authority, where it opened. Will be resolved by the Board of Supervisors of King William County that Virginia that Joe C. Joseph Sanders Jr. be a reappointed King William County primary representative to the Middle Peninsula Regional Airport Authority for a four year term ending June 30th, 2027, done this 12th day of June 2023. Second. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Miskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenman? Aye. Chairman Hodge? Aye. Mm, resolution 23-45, appointment, reappointment to the Bay Aging Board, where it's the term. Oh. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Supervisors of Kingman County of Virginia that the Reverend Athela Maria Harris be reappointed to the King William County representative to the Bay Aging Board for a five-year term ending June 30th, 2028, on this 12th day of June 23. Second. Approved. Mr. Morin? Aye. Mr. Miskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenland? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Chairman Hodges? Aye. Yeah. <laughs> appointment to the Middle Peninsula Northern Neck Community Services Board. Now, therefore, we resolve the Board of Supervisors of King William County, Virginia, that Tiffany M. Webb be appointed to the King William County representative to the Middle Peninsula Northern Neck Community Services Board for the remainder of a four year term ending December 31st, 2024, done this 12th of June 2023. Second. Mr. Miskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Morin? Aye. Chairman Hatches? Aye. And last but not least, Resolution 23 47, appointments, reappointments to the Wetlands Board of Directors. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Supervisors of King County, Virginia, that Elizabeth Copeland is appointed to the Wetlands Board of Directors for an unexpired term ending September 30th, 2027. And be it further resolved that Tom Davidson is appointed as an alternative member to the Wetlands Board of Directors for an unexpired term ending September 30th, 2026, on this 12th day of June 2023. Mr. Greenwood, Mr. Carver, 
Mr. Morgan. Mr. Mikowski. Aye. Mr. Chairman Hunt. Aye. And that is Mr. Chairman of the German. Second. Ms. Carver. Aye. Mr. Morgan. Mr. Wiskowski. Aye. Mr. Greenwood. Aye. Chairman Hodges. Aye. All right. Mm -hmm. so